Howdy folks, welcome to another episode of Overlooked Modules, and today we'll be taking a look at this one right here, the Synthrotech Crossfader, or CF. It's 2 HP, completely passive, and very, very useful. Now, I don't know if you're like me, it seems like, you know, when I rearranged uh, this row, you end up with 2 HP of extra space. It seems like it happens a lot, and you usually end up throwing a passive malt in there, or maybe a fixed filter like this, you know, something that's passive. This is the perfect thing to have. And you can use it out of the rack because it is completely passive. In fact, I have my small rack over here and look, there's a 2HP blank right here. <laughs> it seems like you're always needing to fill 2HP. So well, additionally, it comes as a DIY kit. It's $25 and it is seriously the simplest DIY project I think I've ever done. I did a time-lapse video of it and the time-lapse video was like 17 seconds long. It is the fastest thing to build, super easy. So let me show you how it works. now. If you look at the jacks here, you've got up, down, and out. Let's take the up here and we'll plug this into an analog oscillator. And I realize that's out of the frame. You can't see it, but you have to trust me there. And then we'll take the down and we'll plug this into a digital oscillator. And again, I realize that is out of the frame. So apologize for that. But then we'll take the output here and we will plug that into our, our output module. And right away, you can hear the analog oscillator. If I fade down, you hear the digital oscillator. And in the middle, you hear both of them. If you want a little bit more analog and a little less digital, you can easily do that or vice versa. So it works exactly like how you'd expect a crossfader to work. Now that's a very simple example, but let's go ahead and add some sequences to those oscillators. Now we hear both of them being sequenced and we can easily have the analog sequence here and the digital sequence here or somewhere in the middle. So this could be extremely useful if you want to transition really slowly from one melody line to another melody line. Very easy way to do that or just, you know, a bunch of other possibilities. Okay, so what I've done here is I've, I've got the same oscillator and I've got the same sequence running to it. Uh, this jack here is going to the oscillator's wave shape input. And then you can see I've got two looping envelopes over here. One of them is looping really fast and one of them is looping really slow or fairly slow. I could slow it down a little more even. There we go. And they're going to the crossfader here. So let me go and plug this into the output. And we hear that fast envelope modulating the wave shape. And if I go down here, we hear the slow envelope modulating the wave shape. Now in the middle, we'll get both. Or whatever sort of custom thing we want to do in between. So you don't just have to use it uh, for audio, you can use it for CV as well. Okay, now because it's completely passive, even though this is labeled as the output, it can still be the input. So what I've done here is this cable is coming from a random voltage generator. And then I've got this one here, the, the up jack I've got going to the wave shape input like it was before. And the down jack I have going to the pitch of that analog oscillator. So let's go ahead and plug that in. So what we hear right now is that random voltage controlling the wave shape. But if I go down here, now the random voltage is controlling the pitch. And in the middle, it's controlling both. So we can kind of fine tune here. And get a range that we like. Now, of course, that's unquantized because it is a random voltage, but you get the picture. You can also use it as sort of an input distributor. So here's kind of a different way to use the crossfader. And of course you can come up with a million different uses, but I'm taking a trigger pattern. I'm putting it on the output here, which effectively is making it an input. And then these are going to these VCAs over here. And then these audio paths into the VCAs are coming from my analog and digital oscillators up here, right? So then we're gonna go over to the output and we should hear, we sort of hear both of them here because it's in the middle. Now, if I go down here, I'm hearing just the analog VCA. And if I go up here, I'm hearing just the digital VCA. Let me tweak the uh, wavetable here. 
so you can show that's digital. And in the middle, I'm getting both. Now, of course, you can pick an area that you like. And what's interesting here is the volume is not changing. It's just the way that I'm sending that trigger to the VCA. So that's just one more way you can use it. So that's kind of a quick demo of the CF there. Again, such a useful module because it seems like you've always got two HP of space to fill and it's a great thing to drop in there that you'll actually use in your patches. But additionally, even if you don't have two HP of space because it's passive, it works outside the rack just like any other passive module. So if you've never seen this series before, please check out the playlist link in the description. Um, you know, the Eurorack world is filled with a lot of cool whiz-bang modules. But uh, this particular playlist focuses on some of the ones that you might look past. So that's why it's called Overlooked Modules. And I certainly have not tried every great module out there, but the ones that I have tried, I'd like to share them with all of you. So again, today's video was about the Synthrotech Crossfader, 25 bucks DIY kit. Of course, you can get a pre-built one if you really don't want to do DIY. But even if you've never done DIY before in your life, this is a great one to start with because it is so simple. There it is. Hope the video was helpful. Synthrotech Crossfader, check it out.